Professor Coomer here. We're going to talk about a few MLA basics. Um, all of your essays are you're required to use MLA format when using citation. Anytime you use a source, you need to be able to cite it correctly in MLA format. So some basic things you need to know, um, I will go over. But I want you all to understand that everything that you need to know about MLA citation is available for you in the writer's handbook. Okay? If you go, you, you're required to buy two books for this class. The Spiral Bound book, the Vincent's University Writer's Handbook, has all of the answers. So I expect you to be able to read and write when you get to my class. I expect you to be able to look in the Writer's Handbook and figure out how to make it right. But I will go over a few things here in, in, on the video. We go over a few things in class and I'll always try to give you guidance. And if you ever have any questions, feel free to ask me after class or make an appointment to talk to me in my office. But just for the sake of this video, I want to give you just an idea of some of the ways that we use sources. One way is through quotation. And of course, as it, the word would suggest, anytime you use a quotation, you're using quotation marks. Now remember, a quotation is the exact word for word representation of what was in the text. So you don't change any of the words. So between the quotation marks is exactly what was in the original source. Now when you use a quotation, there are a few other things that are required. You must have what we call a tag, okay? When we talk about tagging, we, you, we generally say according to, maybe it's uh, John Smith, okay, comma, and then we go into our quotation. We never start a sentence with a quotation, okay? We always have some kind of a lead-in phrase of your own that it will, will be outside of the quotation marks, something to lead in uh, to the quotation because we need to understand that, okay, you're using this for a purpose, okay? It doesn't always have to say according to. Maybe you might say, in an article written by John Smith, he claims that, and then you have a quotation, okay? You can lead in however you like, as long as it makes sense and, it's, and it flows smoothly with the quotation. At the end of the quotation, we always put the page number, if we've not listed the author's name, then we would put, let's suppose it's, okay, John Smith. We would put Smith, maybe page two. And then the period would be on the other side. Let's see here if I can get that to see that. The period would be on the outside of the parentheses. So we've got Smith and we know it's on page two and the period is on the other side of the parentheses. Okay. So let's suppose we, that is a quotation. Just a good rule of thumb for quotation is that you should never have a quotation that goes longer than three printed lines on your page, okay? Three printed lines, like in, in a Word document, anything longer than three lines, you should think of possibly paraphrasing or summarizing, okay? When we paraphrase, Essentially, what we're doing is we're saying exactly what the author said, but we're using our own words. The meaning does not change, and we do not add any of our own opinion. Now, we still typically, we will still give credit where credit is due, but we do not use quotation marks. We're going to have, okay, maybe a few, a sentence, two sentences, three sentences, how many ever you want, but the last sentence is going to have the author's last name, and the page number, and there's gonna be a period after the parentheses. Now, you may introduce this information yourself with something like a tag. You may say, according to Smith, da 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 da. Or you could just not. You can just say this, whatever, and then have the citation at the end, and you're safe because you've given information saying that this comes from this other person. Here's what I suggest, though, okay? I suggest that you start off, before you begin your paraphrase, go ahead and say, let the, uh, your reader know who you're getting this information from, and then at the end, go ahead and give the citation to. Better safe than sorry. We don't want to make any mistakes. We want the audience to know these are not my words, they're the words of Mr. Smith. Okay, the same is with summaries. Summaries you've been doing all semester long. 
the summary must have the author's, pa the author's name and the, la and the page number, and that must be uh, at the end of the summary. You always want, in a summary, you're always, again, you're just giving the main ideas, the main points. If you have any questions on how to do a summary, again, we've got the instructions on the Blackboard site. Please take a look at that. Okay, thank you.